a nuclear reactor. The nuclear reaction in the sun is a fusion reactor, okay, and it creates tremendous heat, and we get it by radiation, and the radiation powers the solar cells. Mm. So in effect, solar power is, yes, nuclear power. I've never heard that before. Well, there you have it. Uh, we do get radiation from the sun, and the sun's yeah, they radiation. talk about, uh, you know, airlines. Uh, you know, I remember when I was flying from uh, New York to uh, Beijing one time, and uh, when you fly over the uh, North Pole and at such a high altitude, uh, they actually warn you uh, that you're going to be exposed to a higher level of radiation than typical because you're closer to, well, the sun. It's true. If, uh, if you fly, if you're a, an airline pilot, you get much more radiation than you do as a nuclear, uh, a nuclear worker. I think in uh, 35 years in the nuclear Navy, I got 100 millirem of exposure. You get more than that in a few, uh, a few big uh, CT scans of your body in the medical industry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> used to be in sitting in front of the television, you get radiation. Yeah. And yes, I, you may not realize this, but you get radiation by being next to people because people have radioactive materials in them, nitrogen and carbon. My uh, roommate in college was very good at uh, you know, getting those uh, things out of him, though. Oh, uh, yes. Well, that's why he glowed in the dark, too. He was kind of <laughs> special. Right. He was very special. Yes, yeah. indeed. So, so nuclear power is, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a very good source of energy. It has to be treated with respect. We, in this country, we have a nuclear regulatory agency, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, that has at every nuclear power plant a person who can shut the plant down if anything unsafe is happening. It's an independent third-party uh, control. And uh, if they if the uh, plants have anything that's unsafe, they try to get those fixed in uh, in availabilities. And if they have to shut down, it's uh, they do that if that's what they need to do. Uh, I work on troubleshooting nuclear plants, and they'll call up and they say, "Hey, we have a problem. We're shutting the plant down. We need people here to help us get it fixed and back up so that we can produce the the electricity." The usage of the nuclear plants is very very high. Their 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 utility factor is like over ninety five percent. It's uh, up in the been up in the nineties for many years. And uh, this is a very good source of electricity. Now, by comparison, if we if people say, well, gee, I'm worried about uh, – originally people said, well, maybe these plants can blow up like bombs. Well, they can't. Uh, it's very difficult to make a bomb. Uh, people say, well, look at, uh, look at uh, Three Mile Island. Yeah, it, it, had a, uh, it had a, it had a fuel, fuel meltdown, uh, yeah, Fukushima. Yeah. But, Fukushima but, yeah. but, but, but in Three Mile Island, they did have a, an accident, and the, the, the fuel did melt down. It didn't go to China. Sorry, Jane Fonda. And uh, so what, what happened was, uh, was they destroyed the inner core of the reactor vessel, but nothing got out that was harmful to the population. Mm. I was uh, in an international meeting back when that happened, and people from other countries said, boy, if that's, the, if that's, if that's what happens when that accident occurs, that's very, that's very safe compared to what we thought it might be. And, and so they redoubled their efforts back. This was back in the, uh, in the 80s. Now, uh, Fukushima was an interesting problem. Because yeah, there was Japan just not too many years ago. Not too many years ago. Fukushima, they, they had a, uh, a, an earthquake. Now, people say, well, 200, 20,000 people died at Fukushima. And you say, well, how many died from the nuclear plant? Well, mm -hmm. all those 20,000 died because of the flooding. And the people uh, who were operating the nuclear plants actually were very brave because even though their cities around them they knew were in danger and their families were in danger, they stayed to keep the plants as safe as, safe as they can and shut them down. The ultimate problem with Fukushima was they uh, they lost their power, their backup power, and some of their oil, the, the tanks and so forth for mm -hmm. the emergency power were were wiped out by the tidal waves that went way up the hills where the tanks were. And yeah. Nobody, it was unthinkable at the time that that the waves could be that tall, uh, and and so that's why well, so many people were killed. It's also why they lost their uh, fuel tanks uh, that were uh, that were their emergency backup. Now, how about power. the uh, you know there there are kind of uh, two concerns that I've heard as uh, yeah. just a normal citizen sure. in this space is uh, and and uh, you know caring about the environment and and being somebody that does believe in global warming uh, myself. Um, you know, the, uh, there, there was the accident uh, factor of, uh, of these things that you're kind of talking to. Uh, you've talked about Three Mile Island, a little bit about Fukushima. You know, there's obviously uh, in Russia, there was the meltdown uh, back in the 80s uh, as well that they talk about are st is still impacting the environment in that space. So there's kind of that, that, that uh, kind of spillage or the, uh, uh, the breakdown of the nuclear plants uh, and the resulting seepage of uh, radiation out there. That's one fear that uh, yes, environmentalists right. bring to the table. The second fear, though, is that uh, the, the spent nuclear fuel uh, and uh, that the, the output of this, um, this procedure, this process, this energy is something that will never decay. And uh, it creates a, re a radiation sure. uh, that has to just be buried someplace, which can't be good for anybody. 
Well, let's talk about that. Uh, if I take uh, if I take coal fire, oil fire, uh, gas fired plants, and I create the off gassing, the byproduct is carbon dioxide, which people don't like, and it's very hard to contain that genie back in the bottle when you create so much volume of of carbon dioxide. In the case of a nuclear plant, uh, all my fuel is in these tiny little, very highly uh, corrosion-resistant tubes, uh, and inside those tubes is the nuclear fuel. Mm -hmm. And when you're done with the nuclear fuel, all of the byproducts of that fuel are still inside this highly corrosion-resistant fuel. They make it out of a zirconium alloy called zir zircoloy. And it can last forever, basically. And what we do with it when we take it out is we've trapped the genie, if, as it were. There's mm -hmm. no CO2 in the air. It's all trapped in these little tubes. The little tubes are very small volume, and they create a tremendous amount of electricity. But when they're done, as uh, as Otis says, they they leave the residual uh, the original products of the nuclear reaction, which have a in many cases a long half life. But they all do decay, and many of the many of the many of the radioactive particles that are left decay very rapidly. So in a short period of time, much of that radiation is gone. A little bit of it lasts for a very long time. So as as Otis says, we have to store it somewhere safely, and we have to wait for, there's what they call decay heat. So initially, when you take the fuel out of the reactor, you put it in a cooling pool. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's one of the problems that Fukushima had, is those cooling pools that were temporarily stored uh, lost their water, and that's where most of the radioactivity got es had escaped occurred. Uh, but we can take these and we can put them in a in a very safe uh, once they once they've cooled down we put them in a very safe container we ship it to we put it in what we call dry storage and then the dry storage uh, containers which can be hit by trains and dropped from cliffs and are basically indestructible we store those inside a facility a big mountain right well yucca mountain is uh, by law was supposed to be the place we put it we put billions of dollars into that and then the, then after spending that much money the nevadans uh, decided well we don't want it mm. but other people are bidding like mad to get that facility and the foreign countries have offered to take it mm. but but if you put it in a safe facility the only reason what you're looking for is a place that nobody can let's say drop a drop a bomb and do some terrorism by blowing up your fuel storage area right. And so if you put it in a safe, ge geologically safe area, then that's what you worry about. Uh, what you worry about is gone. And, and then what you do is you can go back in there. It's not, it's not a waste dumping ground. It's a storage facility. Now, somewhere down the line, the amount of fuel that's left over in this will, will be harvested. Uh, the, the radioactive decay will, will, will drop off, and people can go in and take a material back out of that. They can go drive the little trains underground and pick up the containers, the casks, they call them, and You're bring talking them back no, out. Uh, I mean, that, that's thousands of years down the road, Well, though, it's some, it? some, some distance down the road. It depends on, it's an economic thing. Is uh, What they're finding now is what they used to throw away uh, for the, the uranium. Uranium in the ground is about, it's a very small amount, 0.7% of mm -hmm. uranium ore is U-235, which is what you want for the fission core. 0.7%, that's very low. They enrich it to about 5% to make nuclear fuel and what they when they enrich it, what they have left over is less than 0.7, mm -hmm. and they put it in what they call tailings. Now they're finding that the tailings, they can still harvest the uranium out of that, and so people are buying up the tailings because now it's economical to get to further enrich that, that uh, fuel. So at some point, uh, you can go back and harvest the fuel in the, out of these uh, storage facilities. Um, anyway, that's that's uh, storage is correct. You want to store it safely, uh, just like any other waste. Uh, a bigger concern, for example, is the coal. Coal ash is stored uh, mm. from the power the power plants that use coal. Yeah, and in fact, the coal ash has more radioactive material in it. It's it's a, it's, a, it's a large number of tons, but a small percentage. And and if you dump that into the river, for example, by accident, which has happened, which has times. happened in a few cases, then it's it's a very bad environmental uh, issue. So actually, the coal ash waste is more dangerous, in my opinion, than than the nuclear waste, which is much more carefully stored. Got it. So responsible, responsibility is key to any form of electricity. Uh, the neat thing about electricity is there's so many things you can do once you turn it into electricity. I mm -hmm. was in a... I was in the uh, driving up uh, uh, on the highway, and I stopped in one of these uh, uh, dry these uh, places where you can wash your hands and go to the bathroom and so forth. And they have it's these called uh, a, a a bathroom, right? Yeah, bathrooms, but yes. but but they had rest stops. They, but but they had this Rest thing rooms. that says, "Please use our electric dryers to save trees." 
and and to save waste from trees. And I said, well, trees are, are a replaceable resource, whereas electricity that you're using has to burn something. You know, whether it's whether it's uh, solar or or wind or something mm. has to be used and and created. So I said, well, you know, the thing we have is electricity is clean in the cities. It's nice to have. Uh, and, and, and so what we really want is a lot of electricity produced safely. In the long run, it's a mix. Okay, right now I have, uh, I'd like to get rid of the coal, but I don't want to get rid of the electricity. So I have to work my way. I have to wean myself off coal mm. and oil. And natural gas is, uh, right. is predominantly used now because it's very cheap. And I have to use nuclear for now, at least nuclear fission and, uh, and wind power and solar. Uh, the problem with wind power and solar is... Uh, I can't if I if I'm making too much by wind and solar, I can't store it anywhere very easily. And so when we talk about the hydrogen economy in another discussion, we'll talk about uh, how that gives us the option to uh, to store energy mm. in the form of hydrogen that I can turn around and and use uh, to to balance to to help make things like solar and uh, and wind power. Uh, uh, available in the dark and on uh, on no windy days by storing electricity and hydrogen or some other form. So basically, if you what you're saying is that uh, you know nuclear power can be uh, brought up and down, scaled up and down as it's needed, uh, because you're basically just controlling the amount of steam that's coming off these things. Whereas wind power or uh, solar power, what you're saying is it needs to be charged up and stored someplace for usage later. And that storage process is flawed at this point. Is that is that what you're getting at? Yeah, it's not there. People are working very hard coming up with better energy storage so that they can take uh, periodic sources of energy like wind and solar and find ways to store them and, and uh, basically have them when, when the wind and solar are not available. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. That's one yeah, of I the... Mean, uh, uh, yeah. Elon Musk, uh, from uh, the guy that uh, produced Tesla, right? Uh, just last year, he was talking about uh, kind of this giant uh, battery... Uh, for yeah. your house, uh, that would st- take the uh, it, it would be the place that you would store uh, that type of power, and it would just kind of sit as a giant battery that's rechargeable within your house. Uh, but uh, you know that was uh, you know breakthrough for the home, but very expensive. Sure, even uh, they have a solar heating, you know, where you could put these uh, water water panels on your roof that will heat up your your water supply and then you have that hot water goes into a big tank and it stores energy Mm -hmm. so when you need the hot water it's available which you need hot water at night when the sun's not shining you've stored up the energy during the day there's many different ways you can store energy there you can you can you can pump Mm -hmm. water up to reservoirs on mountains for example and then use it for make hydraulic power yeah 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 you turn big flywheels and that the flywheel energy can be re, re, you know can be reobtained when you, when again when the source that's charged the the flywheel has gone down, so so energy is an interesting thing. Uh, electricity is fantastic. Uh, it's a it's a great way to do many things. It's it's what your technology conference is about, and it, it counts on a steady supply, always ready of electricity when you need it, and mm-hmm. and that's why uh, nuclear is one facet of that right now. Right, right. And so nuclear is one facet of that. Uh, solar is, uh, you know, in- increasing in popularity. I got a phone call uh, every other week from uh, somebody trying to sell me solar panels for my roof. Uh, I go into Home Depot and they're trying to sell solar panels there uh, as well. Wind power is, uh, you know, very popular uh, in the western part of the United States in particular, uh, in certain parts of Europe. Uh, Sweden is uh, very big on uh, solar power, for instance. And, uh, you know, I guess part of uh, the challenge here is uh, identifying the right mix. And I guess it's not so much nuclear power versus solar versus wind, which are more clean energies, as it is uh, those three um, in contrast to coal and uh, and fossil fuels and natural gases. And, That's right. And those things. And, and you know, and there's so much economy uh, across the world and, and in the U.S., that is built on powering devices and cars and all of those things with these uh, these dirty uh, fuels, if you will. And so you're still seeing, uh, and, and you know, there's accusations of price manipulation in the gas industry to keep the prices way down. To uh, you know, gas you saw over the years uh, would increase in price, increase, 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 and then suddenly, when um, you know the U.S. started finding out ways of becoming more competitive in oil production, uh, you know, the uh, Middle Eastern com- countries started reducing the prices uh, so that they 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 yeah, were yeah. out uh, they were undercutting uh, the other yep, sources of competition. Right. So there's all this competition around oil. Um, and, uh, you know, I can only imagine, though, that that 
uh, is, is in contrast to um, these other clean energy sources, you know, there's such a debate going on. And you see it this week even with CES, right? CES this week, uh, there's lots of buzz about autonomous vehicles and electric cars and uh, and the like. Well, that's moving away from the fossil fuels over to the electric cells and the electric fuels, and those need to be powered by something. And you make the electricity. 